Hi guys, I'm Chronically Jenny and today I'm going to be answering all your questions about mobility aids. I did a little question box over on my Instagram and was overwhelmed by the response and the amount of questions there were, so thank you so much for that. There are a lot of questions that I get asked all the time about my mobility aids and how and why I use them. So I wanted to make a video so that I could easily send everyone here to answer all the questions they might possibly have. Please bear in mind that these answers are just from my own experience and I'm not a doctor or a physio or an occupational therapist. So if you do need help with a specific type of mobility aid for your specific condition, please go and talk to them about it if you have questions or concerns. But that being said, I really hope some of these views from my own experience will really, really help. Let's get started. There are two main questions I get asked about using mobility aids all the time. And I actually did a post on my Instagram a little while ago to answer those specific questions. But because they're the most popular and they did come up again and again, I will answer these for you. So the first one is, I feel like a mobility aid might be helpful for me, but when should I start using one? Now, my first response to this is, if you think it might be helpful, it probably would be. A mobility aid isn't an easy thing to think about. So if you're thinking about it, it would probably be of some benefit. Mobility aids can come in all shapes and sizes and be used for so many different reasons. I don't just think of mobility aids as my walking sticks or my walker. I think of it as my supports and my braces or my shower chair. So you're probably actually already using mobility aids more than you think, even if you're not using a stick or a walker to get around. Mobility aids have so many different functions, but overall a mobility aid is just something that aids your mobility, whatever that may be. You also might use different mobility aids of different levels for different days. For example, sometimes I use a walking stick, sometimes I use my walker, occasionally I use a wheelchair. It all depends on the situation and your pain and fatigue and how it affects you. This video is made mainly for people with chronic pain and chronic fatigue conditions who might find it helpful to use a mobility aid for those reasons. But I'm sure it will help people with all sorts of different conditions. If you think you might find using a mobility aid helpful, I suggest finding one really, really cheaply or borrowing one. And these don't even have to be long-term borrowing situations. It can be something as simple as if you're going out for the day and the venue that you're going to has wheelchairs available for hire. Why not borrow one, try it out and see if it helps. The same thing if you go to the supermarket, for example, you can borrow an electric trolley, um, or if you go to a shopping centre and they have a mobility centre where you can borrow things to see if they are helpful to you and help you do that task with reduced pain and fatigue. In my experience, it's trying things out that is how I knew what was helpful for me. This here is Cecilia and she was one of my first sticks and I had one before and my first stick I just saw in Superdrug and bought it. I thought it might be helpful because I was going to a lot of appointments before I was on any medication for my POTS or anything like that and they were all in London and I was having to travel there on my own and I felt really really unsafe and unstable. So I got myself a little adjustable um, foldable walking stick that I could just pop in my bag so if I felt like I needed that extra support I had it. And because I was going up to physio appointments in London, it also meant that I could work on how to use it correctly with my physio. And I think that's what I recommend most when you start using one. If you can, talk to your OT or physio. They're probably better than a GP. And get them to set it up for you to the right height and the right suitability for whatever your needs are and get them to help you practice walking with it. I know that sounds a bit silly, but I see so many people out and about who aren't really using their mobility aids correctly. So definitely, if you can, make sure you can talk to someone and learn how to use it properly before you start using it, because the last thing you want to do is cause yourself more pain. Now it comes to the confidence in using mobility aids, and they're definitely a scary prospect, especially when you're young. I was 20 when I started using them, and I'd never, ever, ever seen anyone else my age using them. So to get over that, I definitely made sure that I had aids that matched my personality a little bit. My first stick was black, but it still had multicolored spots all over it. So it was a bit more fun than a regular kind of physio NHS gray stick. Um, then I got Cecilia and obviously she's purple and she's like mermaidy and that just felt like me. So I felt more able to use it and more confident using it because it was like an extension of my personality. 
And then, as you can see, I've got my beautiful New Year Walks collection, which all have some sparkle and pizzazz and colour and light. And that just makes me feel great when I'm using them. I also did the same thing with my first walker. I remember going to the, it wasn't the Paralympics, but it was the Para Championships. And I left my walker so that I could go up some stairs with my stick. And I remember leaving it there and seeing a little old lady with the exact same one and feeling really naff about it. So I took it home and covered it in zebra tape and I started putting stickers on the seat. And after a while, I was having a bit of a battle, as I sometimes do, with feeling like using my walker was a backward step, even though it wasn't. But again, to help me feel confidence in using it and feel like it was okay to be using it, which it totally was, I covered the seat in stickers of all my favourite things. So whenever I was using it, I'd look down and I'd see all my favourite things and it would make me smile. But I think confidence or anxiety about using mobility aids often comes from the fear of judgment. And this is something that's hard to get over. It's hard to accept and it's hard to accept yourself that you might need a mobility aid, but it's harder when you haven't got that support around you. And the thing I would say to those people who are worried about these kind of things is sometimes it will hurt because people don't understand and they're ignorant. But when or if you get that kind of comment, you have to remember why your mobility aid helps you and why you use it and how helpful it is. So that when those things come about, you can be like, no, you're wrong. I use this because it's helpful for me in this way. I wouldn't be able to do X, Y, Z without it. And therefore it's a great addition to my life. Another thing that comes when you decorate your mobility aid or have one that is personal to you is that people ask more questions about the mobility aid than they do about your condition. At first, I definitely got those questions about what's wrong with you, what's wrong with your leg most of the time when it's definitely not my leg that is the problem. But as soon as I started getting funky with my mobility aids, this is puns, um, people ask more questions about the stick. Um, I remember getting my first stick, this is Bubbles, and I was at an event and people were commenting way more on the stick and my dress than why I might need it. And I, <laughs> funny story, recently I went into Holland and Barrett and I was actually using Lola, uh, this red one here, and um, the lady in the shop was just obsessed with my stick. And uh, I told her it could light up because I thought I was using my DNA stick, <laughs> Daenerys. Um, and then she and I were both really disappointed because my red one doesn't light up. <laughs> but that's the kind of thing and you get into those conversations which are funny and fun rather than uncomfortable conversations about your condition. But also remember, if people do ask you questions about your mobility aids or your health and why you're using mobility aids, you can say no. I'm quite open and I will try and give people a short explanation because I want to try and raise awareness and educate people as to why someone who looks young and healthy might have a mobility aid. But that's definitely your decision. So never feel like you have to tell someone why you're using something. So another question that I got was how do you deal with judgmental looks or questions? I think looks is a little bit easier to handle. Um, the wonderful Beauty Cole on Instagram um, did a great post on this recently. And basically what it said was, people are gonna stare, make it worth their while. <laughs> um, you know, just if people stare, maybe ignore it. Just give them a smile back, show that you're a normal person. And if they then carry on being rude, then that's really on them. You know, people mostly stare out of curiosity. And, and if we were all the same, then this world would be a bit boring. And I'm sure you've stared at something interesting or different about someone, whether it's their hair color or a outfit that they're wearing. So looks take on the chin. If there's an opportunity to have an educational moment out of it, then do so, but otherwise, try and ignore it as best you can. Questions are much harder and it depends who they're coming from. 
If it's a stranger, I tend to do the ignore category again. I used to get it a lot at work um, when I worked at the cinema, when I was sat down taking people's tickets. They'd kind of joke about me sitting down or about um, me yawning and that kind of thing. And, you know, sometimes when you're in that kind of mood, that really, really hurts. And there's no point trying to reason with that person because often it just makes it worse. Um, so just kind of nodding and laughing um, or, you know, nodding and letting them go on their way, I find is the best, even though that's probably not the best answer to that question, but it, it makes it easier for me. Um, I think questions from people that you know and love, I think it's really important to have some kind of stock phrases or some places that you can send people to get educated if you don't want to educate them yourself. Um, I understand that you can get tired of answering the same questions over and over again about your medical history. And do you know what? That's one of the reasons I started this channel because I can find a video if someone has a question and send it straight to them um, and be like, this is what my condition is. Here's me talking about it. I don't have the energy to talk to you about it right now, but here's that video. So have some kind of stock videos or blog posts or Instagram posts that you can send people when they ask you a question that's rude or judgmental. If they're asking it in person, again, it depends how close they are. If they're really close to you and they want to learn and be educated, then send them the link. But if you're never gonna see them again, you know why mobility aids are important to you. Just use them and be happy. And the more confident you are, however hard it might be, the more that's gonna show and people are gonna care less. I know it's not the best answer in the world, but I think it's just being aware that it's out there and that it might come your way. And if it does, just having some, some stock phrases and some stock responses that are like, okay, I know how to deal with this response. And it's totally valid if you get upset because it will happen from time to time because you'll be having one of those days. It's happened to me hundreds of times, um, but I hope that helps. I also had a lot of questions about why I started using mobility aids and why I find them helpful. So I thought I'd just explain that briefly. So as I said, I got my first stick who was aptly named Sticky um, to help when I was going up to London to all these appointments and I was going on my own and I really wasn't well enough or confident enough in my ability to stay upright um, that I, I needed a, a stick. And it also meant that I could get help using them. But I wasn't really using them much else other than that. However, then I had surgery for my CSF leak, which I had uh, when I was being diagnosed with EDS POTS, etc. And I had some spinal surgery. And on my first surgery, he bruised my spine and it was really, really painful. And I was using a wheelchair and I was struggling to get back to being able to kind of walk around most of the time. So I was using my stick more indoors and using my wheelchair when I was going out. So that's when I got my walker because that felt like the right transition in trying to get from the wheelchair back to, back to being upright so I could get some conditioning back in my legs and help my back as well. So that's why I went for the walker and then from using the walker more often than not, I managed to slowly transition to using a stick more and using a walker for longer days out. That's kind of how I started using mobility aids, but why are they helpful to me? So my walker is a bit different to my stick, so I'll explain my walker first. So with my walker, that was what I used all the time at university and it was a godsend. I couldn't have done university without it because not only did it mean that I had the support when I was walking, which um, kind of helps reduce pain and helps you have more energy for other things. I'll explain this in a second. But also because it meant that I could carry things. Um, with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which is my chronic pain condition, which is a connective tissue disorder, it means that everything is kind of lax. And that makes carrying a backpack or a laptop bag or, and all the books and things that you have to carry around when you're at university really, really difficult. So to be able to put them on my walker or inside my walker and push them along was a million times easier for me. So that was one way that it was really, really helpful that people might not necessarily think of. 
but another reason is because it has a seat. Now, with my pots, I get tired very, very easily and find it difficult to do things like queue because I can't stand still for too long. So it meant that when I got to somewhere and it wouldn't necessarily be somewhere that would have chairs, I could always sit down. If we were in a busy pub, I would always have a seat when I needed it. Or if I was in a queue at the post office, I could sit down. And I found it really, really helpful with this pandemic because so many queues for shops have been so, so long. And if I'd have gone up there with just my stick, I'd have really struggled to, to stay in the queues. And I've had that a couple of times, especially because they've taken all the chairs that would usually be in the shops out of the shops. So having my own chair with me at all times is really, really helpful. Now, my sticks are helpful because they give me support. Obviously, if you only use one stick, it's only really supporting one side. Most often, I use my stick in my right hand, but if I'm having problems with my right knee or right hip or right ankle, for example, then I'll use it in my left hand to give that side more support. Now, I had a question about does it help with your fatigue? And they don't help with fatigue in the sense of they don't make my fatigue feel any better. However, they do mean that I can do things for longer with less pain and fatigue. Basically, if I was to walk for five minutes without anything, by the end of it, I'd be really, really sore and really, really tired. However, if I use a stick, I get that less so. So it just gives me a little bit more support. So the first time my pain and fatigue levels might be at an eight after doing that little bit of walking. But with a stick, it might only be six. So it's not a whole heap of reducing it, but it does really, really help. And if you've got a joint that's playing up a little bit, it helps even more so. I then had a question about them helping to control pot symptoms. And as I said, they don't help to control pot symptoms at all. If I'm gonna have a pot symptom, I'm gonna have a pot symptom. However, if I'm feeling wobbly or dizzy, it will help give me that extra bit of support that I need. And I do often, if I just have my stick, find myself kind of propping myself up with my stick under my bum as kind of a bit of a seat um, to give myself that, that level. Um, and the same with my walker, it means I've always got a seat and that's always important for pots um, because I spent a lot of time sitting on the floor in the early days and it's much nicer to have somewhere to sit. So it doesn't help in terms of controlling the symptoms, but it does aid them when they occur. The next question I had is shoulder supports. Um, so I'll talk you through a couple of shoulder supports in a minute, but I thought it was also really important to say that with something like Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which affects your whole body, uh, where you have difficulties with your lower body and your upper body, using mobility aids can often be quite hard. For example, at the weekend, I found it impossible to use my sticks because my arms were really both playing up. So it meant that I had to do our weekly shop without any kind of aid at all. And that was really difficult for me and I found it that I was so much more tired by the end of it than I usually would using my stick or a trolley as support. So when we had to pop somewhere else to a different shop, I got my walker out and used it as a wheelchair so that I didn't have to expend even more energy and get in even more pain trying to do it walking when I couldn't really do it by that point. Shoulder supports. So I first have this kind of shoulder support, which is just from Amazon. And it's the kind where you just put it on your shoulder like that. And then it's got a strap that goes across your chest and it just holds in place like that. I think this is actually on backwards. If you have boobs, these are not ideal. Um, they're, they're not very comfortable. I can never find whether I should have it between my boobs or above my boobs. It's just a little bit difficult, but it does really help if I have a shoulder issue. Um, and I think occasionally if I had a shoulder issue and still wanted to use my stick, it might mean that I still could if I needed to. But what I personally find more useful, and I know there are better shoulder braces out there for people who have more serious shoulder problems, but 
with mine what i find more useful is this shirt and you can't really see it too well on the camera i don't think there you go but it's called an active posture shirt and basically the technology you can see in the back there is basically like kt tape for someone with eds we have a lot of problems with adhesive and skin reactions to it so this gives you all the benefits of kt tape without actually having to put the kt tape on and uh irritate your skin I have done a whole blog post and video about this shirt if you want to find out more about it I'll link it in the description um, but if you have EDS for Defina I highly recommend the zip up uh, in the front version rather than the pulling over your head because if you've got problems going on with your shoulders you don't want to be trying to put a compression garment on over your head it's just not going to be good. Okay so the next question is how much does fashion how you look impact on how you feel? Um, this is kind of a tricky question and I'm going to try and bring mobility aids into it um, because I, I often hear the phrase look better to feel better but often I don't think that's true with the chronic illness because it takes so much energy to look better um, because don't get me wrong I've put some makeup on today um, but I've had a busy day and I'm kind of exhausted and I'm very very sore in my back region um, so I don't think looking better instantly makes you feel better but I think with mobility aids as I was kind of saying before having something that you love and that goes with your outfit or that you know lights up like these ones do or has glitter in it is always going to make you feel a bit better um, as it does when you put on your favourite dress it's always going to be nicer to have something that is yours and is a bit nicer. Whether you put covers on the wheels of your wheelchair or you cover your walker in tape or stickers or you cover these things in fairy lights or you get a beautiful stick like some of these ones, it, it's going to make you feel better about using it because it's prettier. <laughs> I also had a couple of questions about um, do I use my stick every day and this kind of depends at the moment in lockdown I'm actually not using mobility aids that much because we live in a flat um, it's all on one floor and we haven't been leaving the flat and I also have lots of chairs in every room um, so I have chairs in the bedroom where we are now, I have the sofa in the living room, I have my stool in the kitchen, I have my shower chair in the bathroom um, and that's that's all I, I that's that's all that's everywhere I go at the moment um, so it's only actually a few steps between each room so unless I'm having a really particularly bad day or I have a subluxation or a dislocation in my lower joints then I'm not really using my aids too much whilst I'm at home. Um, but in, in normal times, um, I do use them every day uh, because I leave the house. <laughs> but equally, when I used to live with my mum and she had a two-storey house, I would use my mobility aids more often because I would need them more for the stairs. Um, so I hope that, that answers that question. And I think it's important that people realise that you don't have to use your mobility aids all the time. You only use them when they're helpful for you and making a difference. I get a lot of people that assume I'm better when I'm not using one and that's often not the case. For example, I don't use them when my shoulders are out. It probably means I'm in a hell of a lot more pain but I just can't use my walking stick. It doesn't mean I'm better, it probably means I'm worse but by looking at me people instantly assume I'm better because I'm not using my mobility aid and I think that's an important subject to, to talk to people you're close with about and educate them about that. How do you use a walking stick without getting achy hands? I'm not gonna lie, I'm not sure I have an answer for you on this one because I do get quite achy hands sometimes but if you have problems with your hand joints or your wrist joints um, then maybe look into getting some support for those if that's going to help you but also you can get various types of handles for your walking stick um, I have some different ones here um, this is like a t-bar 
handle but with a slight bit of ergonomics to it so it's straight down and it's quite comfortable and also because you hold it there your weight is kind of through the center of the stick not as much as some of my others i'm going to show you in a second but it does help but you can also get if you use your um stick in just one hand all the time you can get ergonomic handles which are fitted to a hand shape and that makes it much more comfortable on the hands and um, this is more of a wrist thing especially in hypermobile people but this is bubbles and she just has a standard kind of crooked handle and she's lovely but it's not as supportive for my wrist as the question mark style this is stevie and she has a question mark handle so you can see the difference and basically where i put my weight on bubbles my weight is kind of over nothing so i don't get as much support from the base of the stick and i have to put more pressure through my hand and through my wrist so the question mark handle is better because if you see i put my hand there and the rest of the stick is directly under my hand so it gives me much more support so i hope that's helpful because i know people had some questions about different kind of handles as well so those are just some the next question is were you shocked by how expensive mobility aids are and oh my goodness yes i think most people would be i don't think anyone who doesn't have a disability realizes how much medical aids cost um don't get me wrong walking sticks less so you can pick up a stick for about 15 pounds that's about the cheapest um something a little bit cooler um like this one i managed to get this cheaply on a on an amazon deal um so i think it only cost me about 15 pounds but would usually have been about 30 pounds and then you know my neo walk sticks with all the bells and whistles have various kind of prices from about 50 to about 100 ish um with the the lights and um and that kind of thing so that's quite expensive and but i think what really surprised me is how much walkers and wheelchairs were my first walker i actually bought off a man on facebook for 10 pounds <laughs> um, because actually i was just wanting to to try a walker out and see if it worked for me i was very lucky and ended up using that walker for another four years before she finally bit the dust but so i got very good value for money but usually that same walker uh, brand new would be kind of 60 to 100 pounds which is quite a lot of money um my new walker uh, my rolls motion was 600 pounds um and i had to fundraise for that because i could not afford that but it is so much better for me but wheelchairs are insane um i was lucky with my my manual wheelchair um, my self-propelled wheelchair which i don't use very much but i used a lot in the beginning um belong to my aunt um she's a full-time wheelchair user and this was uh, an old one of hers so i just used that so i was very lucky in that situation but they're so expensive and wheelchair services are not very good in this country from what i hear and they don't really give you what people really need and people end up spending tens of thousands of pounds to get the right wheelchair and having to fundraise for them themselves and people don't realize that so the next question is were you embarrassed when you started using a mobility aid and this might be a lie because i might have been <laughs> but if i was i don't remember um ever being embarrassed i think by that point i knew how much i needed it and i was using it and i knew how much it helped and then with my surgeries and things after that and with my back the way it was i didn't have a choice and that makes you accept things quicker because you just have to get on with it um and in having and in not having a choice i then realized how helpful they were on a day-to-day -day basis and i think that made it easier after that to continue using them without much thought 
I've been also very lucky in not having any comments. I've been really upset reading some of the questions and having people say things like, how do you get people to realise that you're, you're, what you're using is helpful and it's not just for attention? Or how do you answer people that say that doesn't do anything? And I think like any type of, you know, comment or ableist comment, you just have to, you know, ignore it when it needs ignoring and know how much it helps you. I know how much these things hurt, but just remember why, why you use it, why it helps. And as I said, and I think I've said about a million times, getting something pretty where people are more focused on the, the prettiness than why you might be using it has really, really helped me. And I've gained so much confidence um, and pride in my mobility aids by having them fit my personality. I had a couple of questions on which mobility aid is best to start with. And if you've watched my video about different aids for different days, you'll know that I use all three different types of my, my walking mobility aids for different things. And I think that's important. I think it depends on your condition. It depends on how much it affects you. And there's a lot of, a lot of dependence based on personal situation to ask which is the best mobility aid to start with. Um, but personally, I think starting with a stick is the easiest and the cheapest. So probably that. Um, but there might be reasons why you can't use a stick, such as shoulder issues or anything. So definitely in that situation, try and talk to a physio or OT about what might be best for you and your personal needs, um, because it's really tricky to, to know where to start. Most important things to look for in a mobility aid and how to find the right height for a mobility aid. Again, what to look for really, really depends on what your needs are. Um, some people might need sticks that stand up on their own. So you might need one that has a few feet. Um, you know, like I need the question mark handle, that might not be a problem for other people. It's, it's really all about personal preference. Um, I think, you know, some people might want a collapsible stick. Um, so again, it's really tricky to answer on a kind of person by person basis, I'm afraid. How to kind of measure. So my physio set up my adjustable ones for me. Um, and then I've got my Neo Walks ones since then. And the tricky thing with the Neo Walks stick um, is that they are one height. You can't change them once you've got them. Um, so I'd always recommend if you're toying up with a size and you're not sure, always go for longer because at least you can cut it because if you go for too short, then it's all over. Um, I now go for a 33 inch question mark handle. I found that for some reason, the question mark handles come up slightly shorter because I originally went for a 32 inch, which I thought would be perfect. And with the question mark handle, it was a little bit short. Um, and my bubbles stick, which was the first one I got and I got made for heels, is a normal one and it's 34 inch but if i put them both flat on the floor i don't know if you can see that's more than an inch difference i would say not 100 on that but just just check it out um basically the easiest way to find so the best way to find your your height for your stick as i say this one's a little bit tall is if you stand with your hands by your sides um relaxed then my wrist is about where the handle is. Um, and that is that is your kind of perfect, perfect height usually. So I'd measure from the floor um, to your wrist if you don't have um, a normal stick, because that's what I did for this first one, is I had my adjustable stick, so I just put on my heels, measured how high I had my adjustable stick, and then got the measurement from there. I've had a couple of questions about my rolls motion, my walker, 
I'm so excited about this. I only got it in November and we've kind of been locked down since then. So I really haven't had a chance to use it that much to give you kind of a fair review of it. Um, I used it as a wheelchair properly for the first time outdoors at the weekend. And I was really pleasantly surprised. I said this in my vlog um, with how it handled. I was so impressed. I thought it was gonna be kind of juddery because it was a, um, a walker rather than a, and a wheelchair, but it was a really smooth ride. Someone asked if I get hip pain in it, and I actually didn't. And we had a, a good little, we had to go to two different shops. So it was a, a fair a fair go around. Um, but I think that's because it has a like a padded cushion and I've never had a wheelchair with a padded cushion before. I was really excited. Um, so I was actually quite comfortable and it didn't bother my hips in the way that a usual wheelchair does. So I was pleasantly surprised by that again. Um, and someone also wanted to see how the rolls um, turns from a, a walker to a wheelchair. And I have to say this, it's really, really, really easy, but I am gonna do a whole video just dedicated to my rolls um, as soon as possible um, when we can get outside again properly. So probably February, March, um, probably March, but we will see if it, if it goes any later than that before we're allowed out, then I'll make sure that I go out in the garden and, and film it for you. But there will be, I promise, a whole separate video on rolls. I think that's all of your questions. <laughs> that was a lot of questions. This is probably a long video. I am sorry about that, but I really, really hope that helped. If you have any more questions or you want me to clarify something, because I'm sure there were bits that were a bit all over the place in there, please drop me a comment and let me know. And I will do my very best to answer this. As I said at the start, I'm not medically trained or an expert in this kind of thing this is literally just from my personal experience so huge thank you for watching huge thank you for your questions i really hope it helped if you've liked this video please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already i'd love it if you'd hit subscribe i will see you very soon for another video